He's mad! What sort of person boots this stuff up? Okay, I was pleasantly surprised to discover that I didn't need shields for the third task, so let's see if I need any to potentially get myself killed for real. No, apparently not. What luck. Zedric! Get back to the cup! Now! I'm not leaving you! Kill the spare! No! Avada You had time to assess the situation and tell Cedric to go back to the cup, but... You were just gonna stand there instead of both of you trying to get back to the cup or something? And then Cedric says he won't leave Harry behind as if Harry's incapable of running back to the cup on his own, which... Would have made sense if the game had included the fact that a massive spider was supposed to have injured Harry's leg, as the book described, but that never happened here. So if Harry's too stupid to run back to the cup instead of just... I don't know what he's doing, just standing around and shouting, I guess, then Cedric should have just saved himself anyways. There was no reason for him to stay here. Just... What the fuck? In the book and movie, they were unsure of what was going on after realizing that they had touched a port key, and then they were essentially ambushed by Wormtail and Voldemort. But here, it's as if they just instantly knew what was going on after arriving in the graveyard and decided to wait for the antagonists to find and kill them instead of getting the hell out of there. The way the game tells the story makes no fucking sense at all. Harry Potter. The boy who lived. Did he appear out of thin air? I'm going to destroy you. Crucio! Pretty sure Crucio doesn't have a green light associated with it. Come on, Harry! Let's see what stool boy spells you have up your sleeve! What was the point of returning me to gameplay for three seconds before showing another cutscene? It might even be painful. He's not supposed to just appear out of thin air. There's a whole elaborate ritual of dark magic, for fuck's sake. This makes it seem like Voldemort was always back, but just standing around waiting for Harry to show up. Okay, so in between my ranting and Voldemort's taunting, the game told me I had to throw the skeletons to defeat them. So if I throw the skeletons right into Voldemort's fucking face, nothing happens. The skeletons just bounce off of him like a solid wall, and Voldemort doesn't flinch. Not that I would expect this to hurt Voldemort anyways, he's supposed to be ultra-powerful, and the objective, of course, is to survive and escape at the moment, not defeat him. Now I'm just standing next to him and he's not doing a damn thing. What a lazy piece of shit. Apparently not. I can shoot Jinxes at point-blank range and nothing happens either. Again, not that I would expect Jinxes from a fourth year to hurt him, but still, he should at least be acting like he's doing minimal things to defend himself. Look at this fucking guy. I stupidly had my back turned to him for a few seconds and he didn't do a damn thing. I'm not sure if Harry or Voldemort is a bigger dumbass in this situation. What am I even wanting, waiting for right now? Oh, there's another skeleton. I think whether or not they shatter depends on how far you throw them. And how quickly you throw them, too, of course. Can't expect them to break if I just lazily make them float away at five miles an hour. Are there any more skeletons? This isn't very dramatic at the moment. Yep, there's another one. Well, well, your filthy muggle mother would be proud. Shut the no. fuck up. I want to see the light leave your eyes. Oh shit, he's gonna do it. Where the fuck did the other Death Eaters come from? Well, at least I can use this ball of energy to hit the skeletons and destroy them, but while the Priori Incantatum whatever effect is going on where the two spells meet is being flung all around me, the green stream of light from Voldemort's killing curse is still going through my body every time the ball of light circles around me, so what the fuck? Who the fuck do these skeletons used to be, anyways? And we're destroying gravestones, too. Show some respect, shitlord. 
Like, that could have been somebody's grandpa from World War II, fought in the Battle of Britain. You don't fucking know. Bow to death. Now what, you're gonna throw shit at me too? Yeah, apparently so. Well, as we learned from the second task, massive stone objects crashing into Harry don't seem to hurt him. No way, they were just slowed down from water resistance. Shit. They're just laughing at me. Oh man, I thought he was maybe finished using that statue against me. That's sort of hard to dodge when I'm holding the bond between these two wand cores intact. I can't really sprint at full speed at the moment, and this shit just flies at me at 80 miles an hour or something. And I'm nearly dead with five hit points. Now, fuck, I died. Damn it. Are you for real? Why do I have to start this far back again? Yeah, that's right. I'm back to fight again. I bet Voldemort wishes he was carrying a chocolate frog with him the night he killed Harry's parents. That he wouldn't have nearly died. Fucking dumbass. You know, I read that the voice actor for Voldemort here was the same person who actually played Voldemort in the movies. That doesn't seem to happen much, where movie actors voice their respective characters in video game adaptations. I wish they actually did that more often. Not that the other voice actors did a bad job or anything. I, I liked Moody's voice actor in this game, even though he didn't sound too much like the actor in the movie, but you know, it'd still be cool if the credits show Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, and Emma Watson as their respective characters in the video game adaptation, as well as the movie adaptation. And half the time I throw these skeletons, they just stay intact. Fuck this. Why can't I just walk away and leave? He's not gonna stop me, he's just standing there like a bald scarecrow with a fleshlight interior. Although I just realized, I don't remember where I dropped the Triwizard Cup. And I can't escape if I... And apparently I can walk some distance away though, until I reach that gate. Now come on Harry, you seriously couldn't climb over the gate or blast it away or something? I just realized that Voldemort is fucking tall. Sounds like I successfully broke that skeleton. Come on, I probably can't get to the point where Voldemort starts throwing that statue at me again until I... destroy this last skeleton. Okay, I think I broke it, now what? God damn it, Harry, I know you have trouble aiming, but can't you at least keep your jinxes from going into the ground? Wait, I hear another skeleton. Alright. Oh, come on, I threw it far enough away at a decent rate of speed, right? Unless Voldemort is catching them with a wandless, non-verbal levitation spell to slow down their impact every time I send one of them his way. Come on. Well, that shattered that time. No! I want to see the light leave your eyes! I do too. Why isn't there any magic that lets me shoot laser beams from my eyes anyways? Damn it. I'm trying my best, but I look like a dumbass repeatedly hitting myself with this ball of energy. I find it difficult to control, although that was probably the point. Death Eaters keep asking the same questions over and over again every several seconds. It's one thing for Ron or Hermione to repeat something once an episode, but every several seconds? Yeah, see? I'm not kidding. They just ask the same thing repeatedly and Voldemort never gets annoyed at them. Now granted, it's not exactly the same question, but it's close enough. It's not the kind of variety I was looking for. That's like getting tired of eating red apples every day, so you're offered a green apple instead as a substitute to switch things up. It just, it's not sufficient to add any variety to your life. Okay. And again, where the fuck did the Death Eaters come from anyways? What 
the fuck is he doing <laughs> doing now? Stop making that noise. He's like <laughs> It's not like I'm throwing stone carvings of the Grim Reaper at his nuts. Calm your shit. Is he struggling to take a shit while standing up? I don't understand. Maybe I'm far enough away from the range of the statue if I stand here. Oh, never mind. That was a stupid thing to be hopeful of. Fuck this thing. Seriously. Oh, hey, I destroyed part of that statue with a spirit bomb. Oh, yes, I did it! Finally! What, did he get knocked backwards? Oh, hello. He didn't say anything? Then what's the point of Cedric's ghost appearing? <laughs> what the fuck? Did Harry just do wandless magic? He's back. Voldemort's back. With dark and difficult times comes a choice. Between what is right what is easy. Should you ever waver, remember Cedric Diggory, the boy who was kind and brave and true. No matter how convincingly you tell the story of what happened tonight, few will believe that Voldemort has returned. But tell the story you must. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's it? They didn't even mention that Mad-Eye Moody was an imposter this whole time? God damn it, how do you fuck up the storytelling this badly? This game is fucked. It's by far the worst in the Harry Potter series so far, no doubt about it. I'm not going to go too in-depth about how this game retells the story, because I could do a whole video on that, which I'm actually seriously considering doing anyways, but I'd want to look at all eight games for the PC and cover all those. But when all that's said and done, I expect this game to be looked at and considered the worst out of all eight. And I hope I'm not wrong about that, because if I am, then that would be some epic shit to somehow outdo yourself in terms of making a horrible game. And just to put things in a bit of perspective, I'm not saying this game is exceptionally bad, as if it deserves to be put in a list of worst video games ever made. It's just an average kind of bad, but it really seems to stand out even more when you have three previous games to compare it to. So the storytelling is bad, even though that doesn't really affect the gameplay necessarily. But the in-game camera also was a massive annoyance, where there were a lot of times where I couldn't see anything. There's also no ability to freely roam inside the castle or on the grounds and interact with other students and go exploring and discover secrets and all that. Something that you were able to do to varying degrees in the previous three games. The music is fine, and so are the sound effects and dialogue for the most part. Although again, I wish they wouldn't repeat certain lines so often. Uh, the graphics look fine sometimes, but other times they look like they're creeping towards Uncanny Valley. And of course, that's all limited to a resolution of 800 by 600 pixels, which is a real tragedy because computers in 2005 should have been able to handle something higher than that. The lack of any options at all other than toggling subtitles is also a scandal as well. No other video sound options such as independent volume sliders for music, sound effects, or dialogue, you know, that really basic shit you see in just about every other video game ever. Or control options such as remapping functions to different keys on the keyboard, or the fact that the game doesn't tell you that it's compatible with a controller. Why add controller functionality if you're not going to tell anyone about it? I mean, my god. But... Yeah, I'll wrap it up here for now. I say for now because I might do one more episode in the near future. It, it occurred to me that I never played any of Moody's challenges, and I guess I should take a look at that. I might break from tradition and just do a quick and dirty improv there, but that, that will make this the second video series now, where the outro didn't end up being the last video in the playlist. Oh well.